need is huge uh, out there. It, it, it just dumbfounds us as to uh, how people live. They're homeowners, but because they can't afford to uh, do the repairs for themselves, a lot of things go lacking in their homes. Floors are caving in, the foundations, they don't have appropriate heat and air. Roofs are caving in, they live with tarps on their roof and mold and mildew in their homes unbelievable situations with raw sewage in the bottom of people's homes and they didn't even know it. The smell was just unbearable to go into the house and then to find, you know, maggots that are uh, all over the raw sewage where they're called sewer bugs, but it just d unbelievable. And a lot of these seniors don't even know that these things are going on in their homes. Another situation where raw sewage was in her father's uh, crawl space and it was just unbearable. The smell was horrible and she was calling me every single day and we literally ran out of money to be able to do it. And I was like, you know, I couldn't sleep and it was like I literally took my own money and I said, I got to do something to help this person. For Nehemiah, our mission is to improve the quality of life for people in the area of housing, economic development, education, and health. We submitted our last report to the Department of Watershed Management. So we literally expended the $340,000. We completed with 32 projects. So we're waiting now for them to release the contract for the $1.2 million. The need is huge. When you look at people and their help is there's nothing they can do. They don't have enough money to spend ten, fifteen thousand dollars on getting their pipes repaired, and so they just go without. It was like in 2012 we had that really bad ice storm, and I didn't realize it um, at the time, but it had burst my pipes because before my pipes were leaking, but I was able to maintain. We could turn the water on and off. We were able to use the water, but when that main pipe burst. We couldn't use the water anymore. And it was a flood. Every time I turned on the water, it flooded my entire basement. The water was spigoting up towards the ceiling part, just ruining my basement. So I couldn't use the water anymore. And then I couldn't pay the water bill. I was already behind on that. But when that happened, I was totally unable to use the water. And I was making a small salary, only twelve fifty an hour, part-time as a crossing guard. There was no way I was going to be able to afford to fix the house. My uncle tried to help me and he sent a plumber out and the plumber kind of took our money really because the guy never came back after my uncle paid the down payment. So I told him, don't do anything else. There's nothing we can do. I can't afford it. I don't know any way to get help. Bought buckets from Home Depot, put them outside, caught my water, and we were able to bring in five gallons at a time to flush the toilet. And like I didn't want to tell anyone, of course, you don't, it's embarrassing, very embarrassing. She didn't have water for seven years. And I thought, you know, we live in Atlanta. How could somebody in Atlanta not have water for seven years? And I've done work in the mission fields and I've seen that kind of stuff overseas, but to see it here in the city of Atlanta. And I went to my son's school and he was so embarrassed because I wasn't able to wash our clothes and bathe properly. So. Here I go, we have an odor. I knew I couldn't tell people at the time because my kids were small. They would have been taken away from me and I wasn't gonna allow that to happen. I could not have my kids taken away from me. I'd lost too much already. So we just kept the secret and we kept living and I kept working. And people think because you have a job, you can do things. But if you don't have enough money to cover expenses like this, there is no way. And then I lost my vision in 2017 to where I couldn't work fully anymore. And even as a crossing guard, I could not keep that job. I felt, and I'll be honest, I felt like a loser. I felt stupid because I felt like I should have been prepared for this. And so she put me in touch with the Nehemiah Project. And I am so grateful because then everything turned around. It was like, I still didn't believe. I just did not believe this because we have been promised stuff before. This was definitely one of the more um, difficult situations to work in just on a whole. Okay. Um, just, just the, like I said, just the environment of the house. Because it was the conditions of her home. Correct. With her not having the water for so long. We first initially actually started working. Um, we had to kind of step outside a few times. You know, like I said, she wasn't able to flush the toilets. I cannot believe.
probably within 30 days, everything had changed. I mean, I've got a brand new bathtub. I have a vanity. I have my, my dishwasher back. And I was like, wow. I could not believe it. People have no idea of what that little bit does so much. I got gas back in the house. So we have hot water. We can actually go into our own bathroom and take our own bath. Nehemiah came in when it seems like the whole world had walked out. But they came in and they took over. I didn't have anything to worry about. They were here every day. The guys were working. They were so kind. They didn't comment on my house, and my house looks as trashy, oh my gosh. But nobody said nothing to make me feel worse than I did. Everybody was kind, they were understanding, and they were so happy to help me. We have um, two different uh, home repair programs. We have our major home repair program that um, services seniors. And so we do major systems through the funding through the city of Atlanta. We do HVAC. Uh, plumbing, we do roofing, electrical. That program is only servicing the city of Atlanta and then we have our plumbing repair program through the Department of Watershed Management. We started out just doing minor plumbing repairs to be able to help people who had uh, leaks, uh, high water bills. We would do um, small plumbing projects up to $2,500 and we were assigned the South Fulton area, North Fulton, and then emergency projects in the city of Atlanta. Uh, after we had gone and did the initial pilot program, which we had to do 150 projects uh, within a 10 month period of time, when we finished that, um, we kind of talked to the city and let them know that there were so many issues that a lot of the people were having with their plumbing that it was okay for us to go and do water conservation upgrades to put in those low flow toilets. But when the floor is sinking and the tub is sinking, and they're having these galvanized pipe issues that they're busting and they have to turn their water off where they didn't have water. The city eventually heard us and they were able to give us additional funding to fix the galvanized pipes, to do some of the sewer lines, put in new water lines. And so that became a very big project for us. This house was built in 1928. The water wouldn't flow through the pipes, the galvanized pipes uh, stopped up with rust, I mean, it was working fine at one time. Then the, one of the pipes under the house had just broke. It broke. So I tried to fix it with a rubber hose. It lasted for a minute. And then eventually it went out. When all the water that you run from here, upstairs, would run in the bottom of the basement. In Atlanta, a lot of the older homes, we have to face the whole issue with the galvanized pipes, uh, lead coming through those pipes. Those pipes, when they bust, you know, it just it ruins their whole house. It was a big hole, and the, the hole was out. We couldn't go no further than here and back that way. We couldn't even get anybody to go into the bathroom to give us an adequate quote because his floors were caving in, and so they couldn't really get in to give us the quotes that they needed. I had a pump down there, but you know that it wasn't that much, you know. So we just stopped. So we started catching it in a pan or something. So you had no water in the kitchen sink, the no. bathroom, no. basically no running water no. in the house. catch it in a pan or something, you know, to wash dishes and bathe and all that, you know. We had to almost settle for it because the money wasn't coming in. Well, Nehemiah project, and they uh, came out and they went on and, you know, did the work for me. This house have a little situation that it has just one bathroom and it was in very bad shape. We have to redone the sub floor, the joists, everything. The structure of the house was bad. And it wasn't a job, we were gonna take a, a few days. And then, um, considering that's the only bathroom in the house, we have a little situation then, we have a kid in the house. So we had offered to give him a hotel room. Javier had offered to get him in a hotel room because they needed to be out of the house because their bathroom would be dysfunctional. He um, didn't want to leave his home. But Javier went down into the basement. He connected a shower, a sink, 
and a toilet so his family could have a place to bathe and to use the restroom. Just the one restroom? Mm -hmm. And you almost had to stand in line to get that. Yeah, well, I was thinking about how to fix the only bathroom in the house mm -hmm. without, and it would take a long time. Right. And right. you cannot be without bathroom and the kids. And I said, Harry, you can't do that. You're going against the contract. That's not what we asked you to do. And he said, I didn't charge you for that. That just touched our heart. We were like, you know, who does that? It was like I hit the lottery. Didn't take long. He did all that, man, just like it never happened. I want to thank him because I can say without them, I won't know what I would have did. And that's the truth. Well, some of our partners in funding, uh, we've been funded through Home Depot. When we initially started, we, you know, didn't have a whole lot of capacity, so it was very difficult to get the bigger grants. So Wells Fargo was one of the uh, organizations that was able to fund us our initial grant. Thanks, Mom and Dad has been a tremendous blessing to us. And so a lot of these smaller funding vehicles that we got helped us to leverage to get the bigger fund. We were able to expend all of that money. And it just kind of outlines what the uh, watershed department requires us to do to talk about how to save water, different ways that they can, you know, uh, reduce their water bill. We're one of the few home repair programs in Atlanta um, that are doing the kind of work that we're doing is very difficult to service everyone. We recently uh, got a grant with Clayton County CDBG. Because of the amount, we will be able to service 20 people, but we have probably 30 people that have already called and we're just getting started. So the need is huge. I'm not an expert at uh, running these type of programs, but I just believe I do what they tell me to do. I report how they tell me to report. My motivation is seeing people's lives change, seeing people have water again, seeing people being able to afford to pay their water bill and to afford to do other things in their home that they would have not been able to do. I feel blessed to be uh, held accountable or responsible to be able to give these services to the people in our community. There's only one word, only one word that I think can say anything because there's not enough words in the dictionary to say thank you. Thank you for anybody that gave this project, for anybody who thought that somebody like me was worth helping, for people who feel like, oh, I give to charity every day and I never see what happens to the money. This is what happens to the money. I'm able to to have a hot bath, I'm able to cook hot meals. If you think it's not worth it, just think about me and my family. Because every, everything you people have done is worth it.